You know what's interesting about all of this AI and, and Instagram and the age that we're living in? Do mm -hmm. you sometimes think that there was a spiritual advantage to the time that you were in? Talking about landline telephones. Oh my telephones. God, I say it all the time. Who would have thought we'd be nostalgic for the 70s? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. it was a turbulent time? It was a crazy time? No, no. 70s wasn't really turbulent. And in a, more, in a way that we, I, we can see in retrospect, it was more generative than we realized at the time. We thought we were just taking a rest after the 60s. Mm. Um, <laughs> but it was like any period of rest generating the next thing. Mm. Um, th there is no doubt about it. I... You know, I used to say that I learned most of what I know on airplanes because I would find it so fascinating talking to people next to me on airplanes. It's somebody doesn't know you, so doesn't have any preconceived ideas about you. Everybody's a little more aware than usual of their mortality. That's right. And you really meet all kinds of people you would never meet under other circumstances. Today, you get on a plane and more often than not, people want to close their, their drape at their window. They want to close the shade mm -hmm. so that the most magnificent drama of nature is not available to them for whatever reason in order to watch a grade B movie or get on their tablet or put on their their earphones immediately and there's a human being next to them. Yeah. There's nothing... Well, the entire mystery of the cosmos is next to them, right? I mean, uh, like yes, the whole exactly. Thing is next to them. Exactly. I remember one man who I once said, hi, I'm Marianne. He went, good. He Wait. couldn't even bring himself to say, hi, I'm Mark, or Who whatever. Who said this? Some man next to oh, me on a plane I thought you said Lin-Manuel. I'm like, Lin-Manuel no, Miranda? No, Lin-Manuel was very nice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally know what you mean. I, I think there's a metaphor there. In fact, I'm, I'm working on a movie, and one of the symbols is how we're always blocking our ears. We're always putting on We don't, and then shades. we say, well, where's love? I can't find love. Right. The Course in Miracles says you're like people in a very bright room with your uh, fingers in front of your eyes going, it's it's dark in here. Yeah. yeah I yeah, mean, yeah. we miss out on so much because we miss the person. And that's why it, it concerns me when I see these little children on tablets. Right. So talk about quiet and talk about mind searching and talk about the decision maker, which I, you know, that term isn't in the course, but Ken talks about the decision maker. Ken Wapnick. Ken, Ken Wapnick. Oh, Wapnick. Yeah. Okay. The idea that it's all of this, the, the two lessons pre, or yesterday's lesson was my, my salvation comes from me. Yeah. That one, forget it. it, it I'm, I'm struck with how many times Jesus in the course is saying the whole thing in one lesson. And my salvation comes from me was one of those lessons right. where I'll never also love made me like itself. Is, mm -hmm. This is what I mean. These love the, created me like itself. Right. And hope created me hopeful and, and faith created me faithful yeah. and peace created me peaceful. Wholeness created me holy. The, I, I have the chills. I can't say it. And you know it. You know, there's a pure place in you that is all of those things. And this is what I'm putting back to you. And I'm guilty, you know, I was just on an airplane watching a movie yesterday. So I'm not doing it all. Oh, I'm the not time. saying we shouldn't watch movies no, on airplanes. No one thought that. No one thought <laughs> that. I'm just I saying, watch good ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, of course. I'm not there all the time, but like, I, part of the flight I was there, part of the flight I would close my eyes, did my lesson, and I was like, oh my God, it was right there. So forget the 70s, shepherds with their sheep, or you know what I'm saying? Like, throughout human history, we had more time to spelunk into our inner reality. And no, we didn't. No, we didn't have more time. They just have fewer distractions. That's what I mean. That's why you know every religious system or spiritual system that I've ever read about emphasizes the power of the morning. If you wake mm. up in the morning and the first thing you do is you go to Snapchat or Instagram or your social media, or you download the newspaper, you, you are downloading the stressful perspective of the world, mm. and it's very difficult to change later. Mm. That's why The Course in Miracles talks about doing the exercises in the morning. All the great religious systems do. If you take the time, and The Course in Miracles does say five minutes spent with the Holy Spirit in the morning is enough to guarantee He will be in charge of your thought forms throughout the day. Mm. If you do your exercise in the morning, you will have a different nervous system. Yeah. And if you instead allow your nervous system be, to become wrinkled by all the meaningless thoughts of the world, right. good luck on not being depressed by noon. Right. And then, of course... Uh, unregulated capitalism has come up with an answer for that. Of course. Isn't, <laughs> I mean, you just said a mouthful, but isn't it interesting? I think we sort of get addicted to fear. It becomes like oh, the, it is the a, devil Yes, you it know. is. Yes, Would absolutely. Would you speak about that? Because well, it, why it, do we run to it? Or sometimes I catch well, myself, like own, the Course says you want to be angry. If you're angry, you want to be Well, angry. it's your own mind turned against you. Right. The mind is so powerful, being literally of the mind of God, whatever thought you think has power. Mm. So you are totally 
a choice what thought to think. But something you don't have a choice about is whether or not your thinking will be powerful. Mm. So all thought, the Course says, takes you and those around you straight to heaven or straight to hell. Mm. Heaven is not a condition or a place. It's an awareness of our oneness. Hell is not a condition or a place. It's the anxiety that the ego would have you feel in any moment right. that you feel separate from the That's rest right. of life. That's, right. That's how powerful thoughts are. And the Course in Miracles says there's no such thing as a neutral thought. Yeah, I did that one, that yeah. goes back to what we're saying before about discipline. You know, you go to the physical gym, you work out because you're you're honing your physical muscles so that you can move and mm. be strong. Mm. With spiritual exercise, you're honing your attitudinal muscles so you can be non-reactive and still, like the line, be still and know, because if I'm not still, I can't know. Mm -hmm. Only in stillness can I get clarity, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's very parallel to the physical world. In the physical world, there's gravity. And as I grow older, if I'm not countering gravity, accumulated weight bearing, etc., my muscles headed down. Mm. Emotional gravity, psychological gravity, if I'm not repeating accumulated repetitions of high-minded thought. Mm -hmm. I'm being pulled down by cynicism. Right. I'm being pulled down by negativity. I'm being pulled down by victim consciousness. I'm being pulled down by anger. I'm being pulled down. That, that's what emotional and psychological and spiritual gravity is. So we do spiritual exercise, much like we do physical exercise, yeah. to hone our musculature. You have an emotional body, just like you have a, a physical body. And you can have the healthiest physical body in the world, but if you go into a meeting, a business meeting, or any person, any relationship, and you bring with you your negativity, your cynicism, your nihilism, your control, people are going like, "I don't want that." Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's interesting t going back, tying what the lesson was into what you just said. Uh, salvation comes from me. It's interesting. My my choice of thinking. Right. And Can every you, moment the Course in Miracles says you're making that choice, it, you make it consciously or you make it unconsciously, but every moment we're making a choice. But And that's power. So starting the day rem remembering that what you're thinking and your mind state and what you're being drawn to and what you're right. listening to inside. Right. So when you replace it with someone else's worldview, whether it be ads for things to buy, right. that's another thing. It's isn't that salvation? I, I, I'll admit that I've, when I was a young man, I'd order an iPad, and I remember vividly going, "I can't die. That iPad is coming." Like, <laughs> like the iPad was going to save me, uh -huh. and so that doesn't work. Well, and you also, outgrew that, and yes, I did outgrow that. But also, the ego, you know, says, "I just saw my name on a marquee last night," and I, I took a moment to go, like, "This isn't it. This won't say." I, well, good for you, Peter. Virtue signaling. Yeah. But I'm just saying, like, isn't that the point? Like. We think if we're famous, we think if we're rich, we think well, if we're... Well, you know, I talked to a friend of mine the other day, and he was, his book, uh, you know, is a big major bestseller, and he said, no, I'm identifying it with it too much. I said, oh, give me a break. Give your chances. You can celebrate for a couple of days, you know? <laughs> we don't want to spiritually bypass it. It, it, it. Well, also, well, that would even be bypassing something negative is usually when you think of spiritual bypassing, let's not bypass something positive. There is such thing as righteous commerce. There is such thing as righteous uh, celebration. Mm. It's when you take it beyond any level of appropriate uh, perspective that there's a problem. But I think it's cool the first time you see your name on a marquee, you go, cool. Sure. Yeah. This would have been the 500th, so I'm, I'm starting to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't take it too far. Well, it's interesting. It's it's what are we talking about when we talk about salvation? Like, Well, the only thing to be saved from is your own insane thinking. Right. That's the Course in Miracles. The only thing to be saved from is the thought system of fear and separation that dominates this world. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that. So if my name on the marquee leads to the thought... Will I be here next year or will the show sell out? That's not helpful. If I go, I did a show, I did a good job, but I can't, it's like Maya Angelou said, you can't pick it up, you can't lay it down, right? I can't live and die by whether or not the show went well, right? Well, the ego will always take you to whatever thought. If you're successful, the ego once says, yeah, but you might not be successful tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, the ego will take whatever the circumstance is and interpret it in such a way as to make you feel bad right. because your pain is the ego's peak experience. And 
<laughs> you know, and Freud said, line. yeah, Freud said that uh, that int- intelligence will be used in the service of the neurosis. So the mm-hmm. ego will just say whatever it is to make you unable to just enjoy the moment. Well, you get the house, Eckhart Tolle says, then you worry about losing the house. And I see that. Well, exactly. The, the thing is, if the Course in Miracles says that the Holy Spirit, your salvation lies in a different sense of purpose. So your different sense of purpose is, um, I am here uh, at this theater to do a comedy show. And my hope is that my talents and my expertise will be used in such a way to uplift people and give them some happiness while they're here. So the more you are proactively in the light about it, the darkness cannot enter. You may win.